Hello, this is Professor BRB. Today's lesson we'll be learning to draw this alarm clock using only the object tools, which means we will not need to work with the pen tool for this lesson. Um, before we start, it is worth noticing that when you're designing an icon such as this clock, it's always good to start with a photographic resource uh, such as this one and realize that you're going to be leaving out a lot of details and simplifying. This is the clock that I started with. Turn that off. This is what we're going to end up with. And this is a template file, which if you like, you can download. There's a link uh, on the notes to this video. Or you can just work with a blank file. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure my rulers are showing. If they're not, you can go to View Rulers, Show Rulers. And I'm going to show my document grid. This is a non-printing grid, and um, they come in very handy. I'm going to select my template layer here and make sure that it's unlocked. That would be locked. This is unlocked. Zoom tool. Zoom in on this. And I'm going to, on my template layer, put in two rules. And this is very important that these be accurate. So go to my horizontal ruler and drag down right to the middle here. Looks good. Vertical ruler right to the middle there. Good. Now I'm going to lock that layer so that my guides don't get selected and get moved around. Go to my, my work layer. Choose my ellipse tool, which is hiding under the rectangle tool. Go to the center here, and if I hold down my Option, or on a PC my Alt key, that causes my ellipse to draw out from the center. But you can see it's not a perfect circle. If I hold down my Shift key, it constrains it to a perfect circle. And the Option key constrains it to drawing from the center. Now, you notice here I have no stroke and no fill, so I can't really see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and click the default stroke and fill button. That gives me a black stroke and a white fill. And I'm going to change that white fill to none so I can see through it. Back to my ellipse tool. Once again to the center here. And if your smart guides aren't turned on, turn them on please. Right here, smart guides. Because that gives me a little notice of when I'm at the center. So there it says center. That's good. Click. Option or Alt key, and Shift key once again. I'm going to draw this out right to the inside of that circle there. Um, if you go up here to the top and look at your stroke, you can increase the weight of that stroke, but it's not doing exactly what I want. In order to control how the stroke displays, I need to go to my stroke panel. And I can find that here, or I can find it over here, the show options. And with that selected, you'll notice down here I have align stroke options, and I can click this to align the stroke to the outside. And then I can just adjust the weight here until it's the way I like it. Yeah. Six points looks pretty good to me. Back to the ellipse tool, back to the center, option or alt, and shift key again to here, align stroke to outside, and now I want a much heavier weight. So let's see what looks good here. 20 is a little, not quite enough, 22, 23, 24, 24, 25 looks pretty good to me. Uh, next, we're going to draw these two little legs down here. So holding down my space bar, I'm going to get my grabber hand, go down where I have a little template made up here for you. Back to my ellipse tool. I'm just going to draw some ellipses here. Oops! Look at that, I have a 25-point stroke. Not good. 
let's just go back to a one point stroke for the moment. And I can really just copy this one, I think. So let's hold down my Option key and my Shift key to constrain it straight. And I'm going to drag that down. And I'll just drag another one down here. Let me make it a little bit bigger, maybe. Adjust it a little bit until I like the way it looks. And now one more ellipse for the main part of the leg. Now those are probably not aligned perfectly, and I want them to be. So I'm going to select them all with my selection tool, my black arrow. And up here, you'll notice my align buttons come alive. I can also find those under window align. And before you align here, you want to make sure that align to, which is either here or up here, is set align to selection. Now you just hit those horizontal align center, and that just makes sure they're all perfectly aligned. Shape Builder tool. We'll combine those into a single shape. Now, notice here, my Shape Builder didn't quite work here the way that I wanted to. And the reason is that these two were not overlapped. And the Shape Builder tool only works on shapes that are selected and that overlap. So I'm going to correct that. Lovely. Okay. There is my first leg. I'm going to pull that up here right on center. And you notice the smart guides are a big help to me here. And I can, with that selected, I can swap my fill and stroke here so it's a solid black. Just use my arrow key and move it up a little bit here. Next, our rotate tool. Make sure that your uh, little leg here is selected. And we're going to zoom out a little bit so that we can see the center of our clock. That's important. Select the rotate tool. And you can see this little magenta circle right here. Right now the rotation point of this is set to the center, which is not at all what we want. I want the rotation to be set at the center of the clock. So the first thing that I do is click right at that center of my crosshairs. Now I have a black cursor here. I can just drag this out and notice it's going to rotate perfectly around the center of the clock. Next, under the Rotate tool, is Hiding the Reflect tool. Option or Alt key, click once, and we want to reflect across the vertical axis, and not OK, click Copy. Excellent. Holding down my space bar so that I can drag up here. And next you see we have the bells to do. So let's uh, go back down to our template area here. And we're just going to use exactly the same technique. First I'm going to draw this little top detail. Select that for the top rounded rectangle tool. Um, an important thing to understand about the way the rounded rectangle tool works is as you start drawing, with your mouse button held down, you can control the radius of the corners by clicking your up, down arrow keys. Um, you have to do this with your mouse button held down. But that allows you to control the radius of those corners. And that's really handy to know. Let's zoom in a little so we can see the details. Rounded rectangle. And I'm going to hit my down button a couple of times here to get that corner just the way I want it. Selection tool, select those two, align, make sure they're perfect, shape builder, drag. And now we go to outline view, you'll see those are just one shape. Great. 
So next, back to our old friend, the ellipse tool. And I'm going to make sure that I switch here so I have no fill and a black stroke. And I'm going to draw my ellipse to match this, this blue shape here. And if you want to move your ellipse while you've got your mouse button down, you just hold down your space bar and you can reposition it. Good. Now I'm, I want to change the shape of this and there are various ways it could be approached. Uh, and for those of you who know Illustrator very well, you might say there's another way to do it, but this is the way that seems to work best for me. So going to my direct selection tool, which allows me to select individual anchor points, I'm going to select this bottom anchor point. I have to click off first and make sure nothing else is selected. Just select this bottom anchor point by drawing a marquee around it and hit my delete key. I'm going to click off again, make sure nothing is selected, and just select these two points. And with my down arrow keys, I'm just going to take them down. I like using the arrow keys because it, it makes sure that it's going perfectly straight. Click off again, and click on this curve. And now my handles come up. Shift key to constrain this to straight. I can drag it right up, and it's going to match my template quite handily. Oops, here we go. You have to make sure that you start dragging before you hold your shift key down. That was the mistake I just made there. Now we've got that nice bell shape. Click off again. Select the bottom two points. Object, path, join. That's straight, not really what I want. So I go to my add anchor point tool. Click once right in the middle, and now right up here, I convert that anchor point to a smooth point. And when I do, do that, you'll see the handles come up right there. See those two little handles? Perfect. Direct selection tool, click off, select that one point, and you can either use your arrow keys, or in this case, I'm just going to hold my shift key and drag it down. Now just a little bit of a pull on my anchors here. And use your grid to make sure this stays symmetrical. And that looks like a pretty good looking belt. Selection tool. Select the two of these and we'll swap stroke and fill. Object group. Now that they're grouped, I just have to click once and they'll both be selected together. So let's zoom out here and put this up right on my center. Kind of control how far away from the edge of the clock I want it to be. Rotate tool. Once again, the default is a rotation point in the center. Rotate tool. Look at the center of the clock to set the rotation point. Just drag it over. Reflect tool. Option or Alt key. Click vertical. Copy. We're almost done. So let's fill these little details in. Ellipse tool, draw a circle here, rectangle tool, select those two together and align them, shape builder, combine. First I'm going to create a new layer so that I can lock what I've already done and work up here without messing anything up. I'm going to go to my rounded rectangle tool and I've got it set here for no fill and a black stroke of say one point. And let's just draw this out and once again you can use your spacebar to adjust the position of it 
and you can use your up and down arrow keys if needed to change the corner radius to something that looks good to you. That looks good. Let's increase the stroke weight. Maybe six, seven, eight points, something like that. And stroke panel. Let's put a rounded cap on that. You'll see why in a minute. Direct selection tool, click off. And we just want to select those bottom two points, just this anchor point and this anchor point. And hit delete. Oops, didn't quite get that one. Delete. And now you see why we did the rounded cap here. We went there and there. Click off, select just those two points, and I'm just going to use my arrow key here and click them up. So, ellipse tool, and we're going to make our little stops here. I'm just going to draw my first little circle, bring down my shift key to make sure it's a perfect circle. Eight points is obviously way too much. I'm just going to swap the stroke and fill here. And let's make sure it's on center. And that looks fine. Select. Rotate tool. Now here I'm going to hold down my option key because I want the window so that I can specify a number. Here, there's my option key. And since there are 360 degrees in a circle, and I want 12 stops, if I divide 360 by 12, 30 is my angle, and I want to copy. Now I can just go Object Transform, Transform again, or there is a keyboard command here, Command D. So I'm just going to hold down my command key and hit D, 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 D. Perfect. The hands of the clock, the line segment tool. I'm going to start at the top here and drag down, holding my shift key. Going back to my line panel here. If all of your options aren't showing, oh, go away there. If all of your options aren't showing, just go show options. Got my line selected here, and I can give this a weight. So three, four, five, six strokes, a round cap. And down here, I can choose. This is my start. And this is the end. Since I drew from the top down, I'm going to use my start. And I can choose any one of these arrowheads that I like. Whoops! Whoa, that's way too big. So let's scale it down. Let's try 20 and see how that looks. That's a little too small. So you can just kind of get this till you're happy with the way that it looks. I'm going to select this once more. Make sure it's all selected. Rotate tool, click once again in the center of our clock, and now you're going to hold down your option key while you drag in order to create a copy. And if you want to make one of these longer, of course, you can easily do that. We can just go back to our layers panel, unlock that original layer. Swap my stroke and fill. And there is our clock. Uh, in a future uh, tutorial, I will show you how to apply gradients to give a kind of a realistic um, metallic look to this clock. But I think this tutorial is already long enough. So we will close here. And thank you for watching.